Hello everybody and welcome to the Thursday edition of Video Clips and today we're going to talk about cancer and spontaneous remissions. Cancer strikes fear in the hearts of almost everyone. If you're a patient diagnosed with it, you're terrified. If you're a family member, a friend, you're terrified. Um, a lot of the terror is based on misinformation, lack of information. For example, not everybody who's told that they have cancer actually has it. A uh, diagnosis of prostate and breast cancer in particular is subject to really being pseudo-cancer, um, abnormalities that most people would be better off not knowing about. And I've talked about that a lot, but um, in cases in which the diagnosis is legitimate, one of the problems is that a balanced look at treatment options is often not made available by oncologists for reasons that range from just plain ignorance to protecting vested interests. And I'll give you an example. Many cancer patients are not aware that oncologists are allowed to sell chemotherapy and mark it up in their office. It's called the chemo concession. Um, and I personally think it absolutely must be eliminated because um, even good-hearted people who want to do the right thing, uh, I think that type of temptation is just something we should remove from medical practice. Well, this is one of the reasons all this confusion that we require that people get a MOSS report from CancerDecisions.com because that is the best shot at taking a look at the vast array of options out there and deciding what's best. Now, an area in which there is a particular lack of information and discussion is the area of spontaneous remission which isn't typical or common, but takes place much more often than people realize. Finally, researchers are starting to pay attention to it, trying to identify why and how it happens, which could provide a lot of value, valuable information to both patients and to their doctors. Kelly Turner, PhD, is author of a new book called Radical Remission, Surviving Cancer Against All Odds. Her interest in the topic of spontaneous remission began as an undergraduate at Harvard when she realized that there was so little research on the topic in spite of the fact that there are literally thousands of documented cases in the medical literature. She started her research while writing her PhD uh, dissertation by visiting 10 countries and interviewing both holistic healers and cancer survivors about healing protocols. She then analyzed over a thousand cases of spontaneous remission and wrote her book. Now she prefers to use the term radical remission to describe the phenomenon, stating that generally there's not anything spontaneous about what happens to these patients. Most did something very deliberate in order to cause their remissions. Most of the patients Turner interviewed reported that their doctors never asked them what they were doing to help themselves and that no one was tracking what they were doing for research purposes. And I have to say, that's one of the things that bothers me is the lack of curiosity in medicine. We've had so many people who are members of the wellness farm go back to their medical doctors with you know, very serious diseases and remission and the doctor never bothers to call here and find out what's going on. I just find that very curious. Well, anyway, back to Dr. Turner. She divided the patients that she interviewed into three different categories. The first was people who recovered without any conventional treatment. Uh, the second was those who were treated with conventional treatment, it didn't work out, and then they sought out complementary and alternative treatment. And then the third were people who used a combination of conventional and alternative treatment to overcome a serious diagnosis, which she defined as any cancer for which the five-year survival rate was under 25%. About 85% of the cases she reviewed resulted in no detectable cancer, while about 15% of the patients still have cancer, but their tumors have shrunk and remained stable for many, many years. For them, cancer simply became a chronic condition. Turner hypothesizes that doctors don't like to discuss the possibility of spontaneous remission with patients, first of all, due to lack of time, a lot of them don't understand it, and they don't want to create false hope. And to that, I would add something else, and that is that it is well documented that one of the problems we face in medicine is that doctors don't like to deal with uncertainty. They prefer to diagnose and treat, do something, even if they're well aware that the treatment that they're offering might not have any hope of improving outcomes. And there's a particular interest in surgery. You know, in Forks Over Knives, those of you who've seen it, Dr. Esselstyn uh, talks about surgery, and he says there's something satisfying about taking it out, you know, it being the cancer or whatever it is that, uh, that's bothering you. There's something um, satisfying about uh, getting rid of the crud, you know. So doctors like certainty, and this idea of trying something different or managing cancer for a long period of time, they just don't, they're really not trained and wired to do that kind of thing. Well, Turner's identified 75 factors that patients use to heal themselves, with nine standing out as being used by almost all survivors. 
And those included changing their diets, I'm sure of that, taking control of their health, following their intuition, using herbs and supplements, releasing suppressed emotions, increasing positive emotions, using social support, deepening their spiritual lives, and having very strong reasons for living. living. There's been limited research into spontaneous remission. One notable exception was publication of, of a piece called Spontaneous Remissions, an annotated bibliography in 1993 by the Institute of Noetic Sciences. It included not only cancer, but some other serious conditions as well, and was supported by 3,500 references from more than 800 journals. Moshi Frankel, a medical doctor, is also researching patients who have spontaneously recovered. In one study, he and his colleagues identified connections to God or a higher power, to oneself, to family and friends, to other patients who have the same condition as being very important. Another study showed that personal activism was important. This was reflected in becoming more involved and in taking control of diagnosis and treatment, changing relationships with others, and in many cases, changes in overall philosophy of life. I have to say I've never done any research in this area, but the cancer patients who I have met who have done well and survived pretty much were determined that that was going to be the case and were really, really proactive about their health. Dr. Turner is continuing her research and has set up a radical remission project website where people can post stories and share experiences. She's real clear that her information is not a treatment plan and it's not a substitute for medical care, but she does believe that patients who survive can offer a great deal of hope and understanding and better options for cancer patients and perhaps improve their outcomes. All right, that's all for today. Have a wonderful day and weekend. As usual, pass this on to anybody who you think would enjoy watching it, and I will be back to you again on Tuesday.